is it possible that you need to perhaps develop a, a greater trust in your body, a greater um, relaxed nature when, when you start to feel illness and injury, so that you could perhaps play through these things a little bit more? Well, look, uh, I mean, it's it's easy for you to say. I mean, when you if you can, <laughs> I know, if you if you come into my body, then I'll be. Uh, more than happy to hear what you think about playing <laughs> It's quite incredible seeing a 21-year-old Novak Djokovic being asked this question, but that day Djokovic retired from a Grand Slam match where he struggled to breathe and looked physically destroyed on the tennis court. 15 years later, at 36 years old, things have changed quite a bit. And at 36, Djokovic is one of the fittest guys on tour and has been for over 10 years now. So what did this guy do to go from constantly struggling physically on the tennis court at 19, 20, 21 years old when you're supposed to be in your peak to being one of the fittest guys on tour at age 36? Something that was unthinkable for anyone to do just 10 years ago, but especially a kid that is struggling in his late teens and early 20s. Well, there's one key element that Djokovic changed and made an incredible difference in his performance, and that is his diet. So let's go back to his early years. Not only did Djokovic retire in this match, but he also retired in many other matches and was known to ask for a lot of medical timeouts, and it was very often that you could see him very uncomfortable on the tennis court with some type of physical struggle, especially in hot places like Australia with his breathing. Well, in 2010, this happened again, and Djokovic ended up losing in 5 sets to Joe Rivert Songa. But this match might have actually saved Djokovic a lot of time, and the reason is, this man right here was watching the match. Igor Setojevic, a doctor that was specialized in energetic medicine, and after seeing Djokovic struggle in this match, Setojevic, who had friends in common with Novak, decided to reach out to him because he knew with a lot of certainty that Djokovic's diet back then was far from optimal for his body and was limiting his performance on the court. So these two had a meeting, Djokovic got tested and the data was very clear. He was very sensitive to both gluten and refined sugars. So they both immediately decided to hop Djokovic on a gluten-free diet and the rest would be history. Because Djokovic has explained in some interviews how he instantly felt incredibly better. His breathing on the court became better. His mind was a lot sharper. He now didn't run out of energy in the tank. And his recovery after matches was much better. He's even explained how his vision of the ball and the court improved. As in the past, at times they both became blurry. And I said with certainty that this turned out to be history, because from 2007 to 2010, Djokovic had good results, but he was far behind Nadal and Federer. He was a clear number three in the world. He won a Grand Slam and some important events, but there is absolutely no way that you would think that this guy had the progression to be the greatest of all time. I'm pretty sure if you made a poll in 2010, if people had to guess, they would think that Djokovic would finish in between 3 and maybe 6 or 7 Grand Slams when his career ends. But after this change, since 2011, Djokovic has dominated tennis. And one of the biggest reasons he's been able to do this has been his fitness. We've seen him winning some of the longest and most physically demanding matches in the history of the sport. There's practically no one that can match his intensity for 4-5 to five hours, even the younger guys who are at their physical peak. And this wouldn't be possible without his diet. So what does Djokovic eat in a day? See, Djokovic is a student of his own body, so throughout the years he's been optimizing his diet more and more, constantly making adjustments and seeing what effect do they have in his body. So from this moment, in 2010, he completely eliminated gluten from his diet, as well as dairy products and refined sugars. In his protein sources, he would eliminate red meat, he still had fish and chicken, but 4 or 5 years ago, Djokovic noticed that his body used a lot of energy to digest any type of meat, so in this last part of his career, his diet is completely plant-based. There's no meat or any product that comes from animals, and even his protein sources, which I will mention later, are completely vegan. So when it comes to making his optimal diet, you can tell he has three key principles. 
One, stay away from gluten. Number two, stay away from dairy products and refined sugars. And number three, and Djokovic makes a lot of emphasis on this, managing the energy throughout the day as well as possible. And one of his keys that he's arrived to the conclusion to throughout the years is that throughout the day, he wants his digestion to take the least energy as possible to do. So every meal that he has throughout the day needs to be light to the stomach. He doesn't want to operate feeling heavy. So nowadays, this is what his diet would look like. He wakes up and has a glass of warm water with a little bit of lemon to detoxify the body first thing in the morning. Then he will have a little break and later in the morning he will have his famous green smoothie which includes spinach, algae, fruits, chia seeds and his supplements like organic protein powder and creatine. The perfect combination to give him energy and mental clarity without feeling heavy. So of course, tennis players' schedule changes a lot day by day. Except for the preseason, they don't usually practice at the same time every day, as they have to adjust depending on the time they play the match and adjust their recovery after the match. So Djokovic doesn't eat exactly the same meal every day, but he insists that throughout the day, he will always eat meals that are light work for the stomach. For him, this consists of fruits like apple, banana, dry fruits like almonds, nuts, dates, almond butter, gluten-free organic muesli, and all of these he will have either separately or in a bowl, mixed with one of Djokovic's favorite ingredients, which is manuka honey, a special type of honey that comes from New Zealand. And in the case he feels hungry throughout the day, one of Djokovic's favorite snacks is a gluten-free toast with avocado on the top. And for the main meals of the day, his main source of carbs are quinoa, millet, wild rice, or sweet potato. Everything, of course, gluten-free. And his biggest source of protein of the day will always come at dinner, as it will be the food that takes more energy to digest. And of course, has the biggest amount of protein, which helps him with his recovery. Like I mentioned before, in 2010, he eliminated red meat, but he did have either chicken or fish. But in the last years, even his main source of protein has become plant-based, and Djokovic replaced these two for tofu, which Djokovic would normally take in a salad. I'm not sure if many of us, if we came after a 4-hour match, after burning 3000 calories, we're able to stay that disciplined and have just some quinoa and tofu. Sounds quite terrible if you ask me. But in this game, there's no coincidences, and Djokovic is not only disciplined in the court, but even more disciplined outside. And every single thing he puts into his body, it is intentional for his optimal performance. So when we look at him competing at that level at 36 years old, of course you can think that he's genetically blessed, but the majority of that performance comes from hard work. And even fellow players have mentioned the admiration that they have for Djokovic and his dedication to the sport. Trust me, a lot of players after winning the Australian Open would absolutely have a cheeseburger, but not this guy. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video and found it valuable. If that's the case, make sure to smash that like button. And if you're a tennis fan, consider subscribing to the channel. If you're listening to this, I wish you an incredible 2024, which for tennis fans is surely gonna be very interesting. All of this said, I hope I can see you all in my next video. Peace!